Sleeping out in the wild can be hard on an adventurer's body. Sleeping in a cell is even worse. We rejoin Dag, the Goblin Bard, Bells, the Kenku Monk, the Dwarf Cleric, and the Human Rogue in a dungeon underneath a castle following an unfortunate meal. Dag and Bells are mysteriously exhausted, as if refusing to partake in the feast has caused them to become physically unwell. Uh, how will the world hear Dag's music now? Of course, Birdman will escape. Then Dad can take off for the castle. Dingle dong, that's a good plan. Where are we going? Don't forget me, please. I can't see in the dark. <laughs> Dag, despite his constant trolling behavior, drags the rogue out of the cell. Party heads down a long passageway and finds a room with three locked chests and another door. Players fiddle with the locks for a while and manage to get two chests open. The rogue gets the trap chest and activates a spring, which throws her across the room and into a wall. Bells, unfazed, turns to the doorknob to leave the room, and the door becomes a mimic. Your disguise was pretty good, but not as good as Dag's. The noise from the scuffle also draws the attention of a nearby zombie, who loudly shuffles over to join the fight. It's a quick battle, though Dag finds something unusual. Shiny, this would be Dag's new treasure. It's even on a little chain for convenient slave management. Huh, that looks like it connects to something else. I wonder. Turns out the object in question is part of a key, but it's currently Dag's shiny, so you better not touch it. In a large room full of dust-covered coffins, one coffin is open and relatively clean. Hey, stupid dwarf, come and check out this coffin. All right. The unsuspecting dwarf walks over. Dag waits until his prey is looking down and shoves the dwarf into the coffin before he slams the lid shut. <laughs> <laughs> ah, how good to have guests again. How has my lovely home been treating you? The players look around, but there's no one in the room with them. <laughs> Can we get the dwarf out of there? Oh no, the dwarf is dead. Birdie bird, help me out please. In a hurry to leave. I'll make sure to send some friends to keep you company. Dak doesn't need friends. Just everyone's attention. Yes, exactly. Ah, you wee bastard. No one puts Fargus Stonefis in a grave. He has a name. Fargus. Guys, really? Fargus eventually calms down and the party heads up to the next area. Dag uses his assembled key to open the door. While it works like a charm, it magically breaks down and is once again scattered over the entire level behind them. No, Shiny! Why do you leave Dag's caring hands this way? Wow. Dag, it wasn't worth anything. The next room begs the question, if you had all the wine you could drink, what would you do with it? Drink it? Dump it out on the ground? Well, Dag decides it's the greatest idea to crack open a cask and douse himself in a wine bath shower function. Reasonably creative, though it may burn a bit. Farkas and Bells decide to attack a nearby door, but it rebukes their effort. Ah! Never! Been! Defeated! Bah! No! Door! You know, Fargus, you really should get that door-triggered anger checked out. But while he's doing that, everyone else manages to get in trouble with an undead zombie ogre and an undead beholder. Fargus! Help! I almost got the door, Dingle Dongle! Fargus decides to be helpful and shoots the zombie beholder with a beam of radiant energy. He then fails a deck save and nearly gets disintegrated. Bells, Dag, and the rogue drag him back into the wine room before Dag gives Fargus some much-needed healing. Well, that was a terrible idea, you stupid dwarf. Let Dag plan our strategy from now on. Now, Oh, listen closely, Dag has a plan. The zombie ogre and zombie beholder lurch into the wine cask room, but it's empty. The ogre shambles in first, just to get hacked to death. The zombie beholder enters and Dag fearlessly stares it down, dissonant whisper ready. You'll never be clear. The zombie beholder fails its wisdom save and is terrified because it knows deep down that its life ambition was to be glue. You'll never be glue! Well, okay, that's not quite a whisper, but you get it. When the zombie beholder dies, Fargus's grudge door clicks open and the party proceeds up a flight of stairs. Up on a balcony stands their treacherous host, grinning stupidly. Ah, I see you have found your way here. But I, Dalv, cannot let you leave so easily. What? Your name is Dag? More like discount tag, you fucking idiot. How dare you speak to Dalv that way? I will kill you slowly. Rise! As Dalv casts a spell to animate the nearby dead, one corpse slowly pulls itself off the wall and falls onto the ground. What is this? Why does it not rise? <laughs> Performance anxiety get you, discount Dag? I finally appreciate your humor, Dag. It's Dag's life's work, stupid human. All right, Dalv. Come here and get some hammer. Hey, Dag, buy me some time. Oh, you just put a copper in Dag's machine of awesome. I hope you're ready for this. Hey, Count Fatula, 
How dare you dress me in this manner? I will kill you first! Dad giggles and makes some weird motions with his little goblin hands. Delve suddenly goes quiet, despite being red in the face from all his yelling. The rogue expertly opens the door and everyone runs through, except Fargus, who decides that killing undead has priority over his own survival. As the players escape, they see Delve throw himself bodily off the balcony and crash into the ground with an ah! He did break an ankle with that fall. Rise, you fools! Rise! Stop them! Stop getting away! Who knew vampires would sound like pre pubescent and teenagers. Hey, stupid, get in here. Bells and the rogue grab an over-enthusiastic Fargus and drag him into a side room before the rogue relocks the door. Okay, that's my contribution. You guys figure out what next. Seems like ah. dead and no bird man. There's a gate over there. As the players lift the portcullis, they hear a groaning and slamming against the door, followed by a, I'm just away! Fools! Fools! I have the key! Wow, his dancers are even stupider than you losers. Shut up and lift. <laughs> At long last, the party reaches the feast room where they started this mishap. It's now empty of food, but fortunately empty of any other forms of life or unlife. Bells and Dag have managed to shake their exhaustion, but another twist has just come into play. As soon as they set foot on this floor, Fargus and the rogue start steadily bleeding. Any amount of magical healing can stop either one from falling unconscious, but their wounds magnify every turn they're left unchecked. Oh, Dalv has found you! Everyone groans and looks up. Dalv is on a previously unseen balcony carried by a small troop of skeletons. Dag gets a wry look and casts silence again. Well, this was fun, but it's time for Dag to go. See you later, discount Dag. If you thought, even for a second, that the party was just going to run out of a lower drawbridge, you're going to be incredibly disappointed. There are a pair of winches on elevated platforms. They can't be left alone for long or they'll undo whatever progress was made, but the defenders only need to hold the zombies at bay for a minute. Not so bad, right? Bells and Fargus go to hold a choke point while the rogue and Dag take a winch. Bells, suddenly feeling quite vengeful, decides she's gonna get a rope around the vampire's neck and drag him off the balcony. Zombies burst into the dining hall and lurch towards the players. Hey, Dalv, why don't you hang around? She manages to lasso the rope around Dalv's neck. She and Fargus heave with all their weight against the rope as a result of a natural 20 and rip Dalv off the balcony. His weirdly dressed body goes flying across the room before he lands with a crash. Bells tries to run after him, but decides, perhaps intelligently, that the horde of zombies will quickly overwhelm her. Dalv has dragged himself onto a nearby table and is shouting orders, clearly a bit worse for wear. It's all going pretty well until zombies burst out of a door near the rogue's winch. Damn it. She'll be fine. Hey, you f***ing idiot. The blood stays inside you, not on the ground. I'll keep that in mind. Another door bursts open near Dag and more zombies pour through it. Fargus and Bells retreat towards the gate, pressured on three sides by encroaching zombies. Dolph will make pin cushions of your flesh! Then he will sight them on fire! Yes! The party barely gets the gate open and manages to escape before either Fargus or the rogue fall unconscious. Exhausted from their adventure, the party finally arrives in Gibna and figure out what they want to do with their newfound downtime. This is the end of the road for us. But they'll be back. Dag is the everlasting. Of course he will be back for more. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and make sure to subscribe and ring the little bell as it'll notify you when I post. I'll see you guys next time.